You have a difficult relationship with food and that's what we're discussing today. Welcome back and first off if you're new here and you want to learn about your emotions, ways of managing anxiety, looking at your feelings and how all of that relates to your mental health, then please make sure that you've subscribed and turned on the notifications so you know each and every time I post a video. So recently I put out on my Instagram a call out for ideas for videos for what people wanted me to talk about and one of the things that came up actually quite a few times was mental health and food and our relationship with that. So I had a little look around this, you know, I think a lot of people talk about how eating well and having a good nutritional based diet can help and aid our mental health. But I don't think people talk about some of the more difficult stuff. And for me, that's about exploring our relationship with food. On that, by the way, I think that when you look at things like obesity, and still we st until we start to look at that as a mental health condition, then I don't think that we'll ever really tackle it. For me, when my, when my weight fluctuates, when I go up in weight, when I am essentially overeating, it's not because of lack of knowledge around my diet, it's not because I don't know about calories, it's not because I don't know what's in food, it's because I haven't been dealing with an emotion or emotions and so I'm overeating. So like everything I think we have this kind of binary idea of what it is to have a problem with food. It's like unless you have a kind of a really bad eating disorder or unless you're like massively overweight we never discuss the problematic relationships that we have with food. I have a very very difficult relationship with food and you might not think that to look at me at the moment probably at the center of my relationship with food is probably an obsession with eating well. Um, although that's flu that, that fluctuates too and can change on any given day. Lots of it has little to do with my appearance at its core, although my appearance does come into it once I get caught in the cycle, again, which I'll explore. For me, there's two opposite ends of the, of the spectrum, okay? So I do quite often a lot of trying to control what I eat and actually it's basically starving myself. Um, and then on the flip side of that, I do a lot of overeating as well and the two often entwine and, and, and relate uh, quite strongly to each other. And again, look, I'm gonna explore that today. The way in which I eat, and when I eat things, hugely impacts the way that I view myself when I look in the mirror. Now, what I, wanna, what I mean by that is, uh, one of the ways that I find control in my life uh, when I'm feeling out of control, and this is an unhealthy way of trying to find control, is I start to starve myself. So I may I may go out for the day, and if I haven't eaten in the morning, which sometimes doesn't happen, if I'm traveling somewhere, and I think I'll eat when I get there, and then I kind of run out of time, and then I'm straight into maybe a conference or something like that, what happens is I'll reach like 12, one o'clock, and because I've been busy with work, I haven't had the opportunity to eat or take in any foods. And what I'll start to realize is that at 12, one o'clock, I become very, very hungry. And now the normal response to any normal relationship to food would be to eat, right? If for some reason I'm feeling slightly out of control with my emotions to some varying degree, either consciously or unconsciously, and that's really important, but if I am struggling in that way, rather than eating when I'm hungry, I will starve myself. And in my mind, I will think if I can make it through till 12, you know, like if I go back into the conference and I stay in there now, I will easily make it until five o'clock having not eaten at all. So I'll do that. Then what happens when I come out at five o'clock, you start to, doesn't do your breath any favors, right? When you're not eating, because you start, you can feel that your stomach's empty and you've got that kind of taste, right? And I take that as a little bit of triumph internally, like I've done really well, I've not eaten all day today. Then I might get to the train station and think, shall I eat, shall I eat? If I rush and get on that train, then I won't have an opportunity to eat and then I can get home seven o'clock and I've gone the whole day without eating food. Now, this is where the appearance comes in, although my appearance has had little to do with what I've been doing for that whole day. But now when I look in the mirror, I'll think I look very lean and I look in very good shape. Uh, but then what will happen is I'll shower, I'm now very tired and I'll sit down for the evening. Now there's an array of food in the house and what tends to happen often uh, is at that point I'll then binge eat, right? And for the next two hours I will eat very, very quickly, trying to uh, avoid that feeling of being full up and I'll eat until my stomach hurts and I feel sick. And then when I go to bed literally two hours later after looking in the mirror and thinking I look really lean, I'll look in the mirror and think that I look fat, overweight, I'll be filled with guilt, remorse and shame. I can repeat that pattern on a daily basis on any given day. And sometimes, 
each cycle I'll get very, very caught up in. So sometimes I'll do the binge eating, right? And then the next morning I'll think, what's the use anyway? And I'll start as I mean to go on and I'll start eating straight away in the morning. I've had periods of my life when I've got caught right up in that and I was around two, two and a half stone heavier than what I am now. And I was just eating. The thing is, is when I'm on a eating binge and it's a prolonged one and I start to notice that my weight is, is, is growing, Rather than face it and start talking about it and be very open about what's going on, I'll start creating a new character to support that. So, you know, all bought and paid for type thing. I'm just enjoying my life, you know. When the reality is, is somewhere within me, I'll start to feel very, very shamed about the ways I'm eating. On the flip side of that, I can do the starving stuff and get home and not eat, right? And I'll keep the starving up for a, for a long period of time and, and I'll drop loads of weight people will only ever congratulate you for that, right? And then where I'm at today in my life at the moment is that I'm kind of eating quite well. Uh, I'm not obsessing too much at, at the moment of counting my calories, but one thing that can happen is when you're counting your calories, yeah, I will obsess about that. I will eat down to the T. I'm measuring stuff. I'm making sure that I don't go over by one calorie and I'm not under one by one calorie. And again, in lots of ways, this is about trying to control uh, and it's rather an unhealthy way of control but nobody in our society will pick you up on it because you can literally say to people, I'm managing my calories and I'm eating like this and people will say, I wish I could be like you. Um, when actually, really, in some ways, it's a response to what I'm doing. So in a way of bringing all that together, what I understand is that lots of my eating habits or not eating habits, as the case may be, are driven by my emotions and the ways in which I feel. When I'm very tired, for example, I tend to overeat if I'm feeling quite tired. But then on the flip side, if I'm feeling highly alert, but emotionally I'm not in a great place, that's when I tend to start to, I'm going to say, overmanage uh, my intake of food. But sometimes that is literally verging on, on, on starving. There's a constant dialogue, I think, that goes on in a lot of people's heads when it comes to food, right? Um, and it's something that that we all to some varying degree really, really struggle with. It crosses over at times into food addiction, you know, addiction, anything that gives me temporary relief that I know will have an adverse effect in the long run, but that I continue to do anyway, when you look at addiction in that sense. We've all done a whole tub of ice cream when we only wanted to do half of it. And the reason that we do that is because it works, right? So we talk about willpower, but really at the core, what is willpower? Um, it's about exerting your will, right? But actually, often my will is to escape the ways that I feel, right? So it's less about willpower and more about gaining an understanding of what's driving the way that I eat. So to completely summarize what today, I, you know, what this video has been about is discussing and understanding that my relationship with food is driven by the ways that I feel. It's very easy to get caught within cycles. Once I binge eat, I feel shame and remorse. I feel horrible about myself. When I feel shame and remorse and horrible about myself, I can have a tendency to binge eat. And then I'm caught in that cycle. Sometimes once I realize that my weight is fluctuating heavy, then all of a sudden on the flip side, I'll go right to the opposite end of the spectrum and I'll start to starve myself and feel like I need to drop weight and drop calories very, very quickly. Somewhere in the middle is where I need and want to be having that healthy, um, balanced diet. For me, setting in stone that I do gym every single day in the morning has been hugely beneficial to me because it sets me up on the right path. So I go to the gym every day in the morning, but look, if you, even if you're doing a small bit of exercise, so you're getting up and walking, but you're setting that focus in the morning that today I'm going to be healthy and I'm going to love myself and I'm going to love my body, then you have a much better opportunity of eating in a better way. But this video is not about me saying, look, I've nailed it, this is about, this is about how you do it. None of what I do is about that. This is more just about me under unpacking the ways that I feel, unpacking some of the more unhealthy um, ways of managing my life that I have so that we can better understand ourselves. So I hope this has helped. Uh, I'm gonna flip it into my computer now and edit it up and hopefully we've got something here that's made some kind of sense. If it's been beneficial to you, then please make sure that you've liked this video because it just helping the channel to grow. We're growing at a really good rate at the moment and I'll see you next week.